Hello everyone, today's video is the full review of the OpenSpot 2 from Shark RF. About a week ago when I received the unit, I did make a quick video about this unit, showing it that it is a lot smaller than the former OpenSpot, the version 1 that we have here. Plus, this small unit does have the integrated Wi-Fi. And they made it so it boots so fast, and it's a matter of a few seconds, and you're ready to go on the air. So they well taught their product to be a mobile hotspot. Okay, with this one, if you wanted to do this, you needed to have an extra box to provide the Wi-Fi connection to your cell phone hotspot or your car hotspot. But with this unit, you go directly. It's one box, it has integrated Wi-Fi, you have the best of hotspot on the market, which is the open spot, easy, simple web-based interface that works on Android device, Apple's device, Windows device, anything you would like because it just use a simple web browser to do it. There's no Flash, there's no Java, it's just HTML5, it works very, very well. They made a very good job with the web interface, okay? And that was the case of the OpenSpot one as well. So everybody who owns one really likes it. But this one came with a few more feature, plus the Wi-Fi, and it's thought to be mobile because this is something I've been asking Shark RF, when are you gonna integrate Wi-Fi? We need something that we can bring in our mobile, okay? If you want to use digital mode in your car and you're far away from a repeater, then you can use your hotspots. Well, this is very, very, very cool. And we're very happy to have such a device. And since, since it doesn't have, same thing here, it doesn't have a micro SD card, so you can shut it down, reboot. You know, it's, it's, it's very, very resilient. It works very well. There's no bug, so this is perfect. And if you add a Raspberry Pi, then you have to be careful if you don't shut down correctly and you're in mobile, then you can have at some point have a corrupt SD card, micro SD card, and then you have to restart your image again. Happens to me very often. If you look back in my former video, I had that in the past. Uh, there's some images that are more stable than others, but then we won't go through that. But I like the fact that open spot is very simple. And, uh, and because the Shark RF inter web interface is very simple, works on every platform. It's just very, very simple. It do everything. It is as good for someone that is not into digital for a long time. That's mean if you are a beginner. And it's also very good if you are an advanced user because you can do a lot of stuff with this thing. So this is a very good news that Shark RF did produce this new device. This is awesome. And I really tested it in my car and check it out how long it took so it could boot. And this is only incredible. Open spot profile one ready. Open spot connected to XRF038 Alpha. You see, this is very, very a mobile hotspot. So what can I say more? So we will go into the detail into the web interface and uh, we will go to set it up and everything and then we'll come back for a conclusion. The first time you start the open spot, you need to connect to it, okay? Because it's gonna be an access point and you can redo that as often as you'd like without losing your config that you did previously just by pressing the button uh, onto the open spot. There's only one button, and if you push it and wait a few seconds, then it will become uh, an AP, okay? An access point, a Wi-Fi access point. So you can connect with your Wi-Fi device onto it, and then you will have this page, okay? And the address, the IP address you need to connect to, okay? It will be openspot.local, and if it doesn't work, it's gonna be 192, dot 168 one okay so this is will be the first address you need to connect to because is it is the access point you're connecting directly into the open spot when you are connected to it okay you will be asked which country you are so there's my country then you click next then you have to select the wi-fi setup because 
you know, to in order to the open spot to connect to the internet, it will need to know where to connect. So you connect into the open spot, then you select the Wi-Fi network you want to be connected to, like I am now. But remember, this is going you're gonna lose the connection with the open spot too when it is connected to your own Wi-Fi network or your hotspot network if you are mobile. And if you forgot to turn on your hotspot, you can turn it on and redo a scan here and it will scan and you will find your network over there. Okay. When you are connected, you will lose connection because you did connect directly to the open spot two. And now you, the open spot two is connected to your network. So your wireless network. So now you need to get the IP address of the device. Like mine here is there's the address on my Wi-Fi. You can try to use this open spot dot local. Okay. Like this. And it may find it. It works very well when you are connected onto your phone hotspot. Okay. So that's really, really easy, but sometime in your network, it doesn't work. Okay. So you will need to log in into your Wi-Fi router and get the address, the open spot receive. I strongly suggest that you reserve that address to the Mac address. So it will never change or change an address where you can remember easily and do it statically. Okay. So this is, IP basics, but we won't go through that in, uh, in all that into this setting. So you click next, then you can quickly set up the modes. You enter your call sign. It will find your DMR ID right away. You do a save. That's very important. Okay. So you save it like this. There you go. Now you go into the selector, the connector tab. Okay. You can do a quick setup, but I prefer going directly into the connector. Okay. But first, before we start configuring our hotspot, on your left, you have the quick setup where we just were. You have the user manual that you get for, from Shark RF. This is very useful. And you have the Shark RF link using the UID of the device. Okay, this is to building a network. We won't go through that into this review. And this is mainly the big change between the open spot one, because you have one menu on your left, you have one on your right, you have the quick call you can set up. Okay. There's no X to get out of this window. You just click outside the box and it leaves. You have the brand master manager. Okay. DMR SMS chat. Won't go through all that into this review. You have the database. You can do a lookup like this and you will find the name or enter a call sign. It will give you the ID. Okay. That's pretty cool. And then I strongly suggest the first thing you do before you start configuring is to check if there is an update. Okay. Mine, when I receive it, didn't work well on D star. I did an update. Everything was solved. So it's probably, I, di I didn't have the latest firmware. So check that out when you receive, when you get into the connector tab, that's where you set up the mode. Okay. So you have the normal mode, but you can select as well advanced mode. Okay. If you're not too familiar, it's maybe easier for you to follow if you unclick the advanced mode. Then you have the mode you can select and the type, the reflector type you can use. So you have DMR, you have the homebrew for brand master, MMDVN, and you also have the DMR plus dongle. You have the DCS XLX for DSTAR, REF XRF, FCS and YSF for system fusion, which is Yeju C4 FM. Then you have other mode that you can select reflector probably come later on. Then you have the Shark RF IP connector. Okay. That you can use for point to point, uh, connection or point to multi point. Then you have the auto calibration for DMR. I strongly suggest you run that first before you use DMR with this device. So this will make sure that you have a very good audio quality. This is automatic. So you just follow on the connector tab. You can also set up your frequency and then you have the mode because here with the open spot, the version one and two, you can actually cross mode between C4 FM in DN digital narrow and DMR. So what you can do is actually, uh, select a different type of modem. Okay. And then cross mode it 
uh, into to connect to a DMR reflector. So you can use C4FM radio to connect to the MR reflector by changing the modem mode and do the reverse as well. And what I see here is you can do also an XDN. So if you have an XDN radio, I, I don't know if it work or it's in future, but the, the option is there. So, okay, so we'll see that. I don't have a, any an XDN radio, so I, I cannot say if it worked. But I know that DMR and C4FM, I did test that with the previous version of OpenSpot. So it worked very, very, very well. Okay. So then you have your reflector. Let's say it's a brand master. So I'm on Canada 3021, but you can also select MM DVM and have different type of connection here. Okay. So just to show you, so this is DMR. Uh, remember to do a save. You also, you need to switch the modem. Okay. Uh, when you are changing mode. So let's go into D star. Let's go here and then you do this and it will switch to D star. So I'm connected into XRF018, okay, which is a French reflector, by the way. But I can also go into gateway here and change the type of reflector that I have and enter and connect to. Sorry, I just go too quick. I gotta wait, okay. But I want to connect, let's say, to a, um, a reflector, let's say, a, a repeater directly. See, two. Then you have it here. So you can connect to that reflector and you can change the model. Okay. Remember this, all the VE2 mainly are French. Let's go here, VE2 VPS, which is our local reflector. Then you go and I can change the module then you know I can connect. Let's go back to reflectors. Let's go to a popular English reflector, which is the 38 like this. Okay. And model A, and then you click save and it will connect to that reflector. Okay. So I'm now connected. Another cool feature, most of the D star user, when they start, they don't know they have to register the call sign into the D star trust server. So, but you can check here if you are registered. I am. So this is a confirmation. So if it says that you're not registered, then you need to register because it won't work in D star without this. Okay. So quickly, this cover the uh, setup for the connector tab. In the modem tab, you see you can change the modem mode, okay? But it will follow the connector on the other side as well. Then you add a frequency and you have the ID. If you go into setting, you have profiles like you have on version one. That's mean you can, with a dial tone, switch modes, switch reflectors. You can pre-program that, so that's very cool, okay? And you have the firmware upgrade that you can do from there. You have your you know, QTH locator you can enter and a few other settings. If you click advanced, you will have a little bit more things. Okay. But you need to know what you are doing with this. And I will remove that. If you go into network. Okay. So if you switch wireless mode, it will just switch into AP mode. I am connected. You see the, the power of your internet connection. It's medium, probably single. Now it's okay. Then you have your DHCP. Uh, I needed to enter into my router, the DNS server, but this, if you go in advanced mode, hold on a second. There you go, hold on. You will, build, you will be able to click override DHCP, DNS server and enter the DNS, okay? If you have problem that it doesn't connect to the internet, you will probably need to do this, okay? And the other way around is to enter the DNS server to to transfer it via the DHCP information. Okay, but you can bypass that by entering the DNS server directly into the device. Okay, so you have this information and TP, and then you have the the Wi-Fi network. So let's say you configure your thing in your house on your own Wi-Fi, then you go into your mobile, and then you have your hotspot. You need to push the button on the open spot, then you connect to, the, to it, and then you select your hotspot Wi-Fi. It will disconnect you, but you can save that, okay? So uh, if you go in your car, it's going to work using, it will search for 
a known Wi-Fi. It will connect to my iPhone, let's say. And if you go into the house, it will connect to your own uh, Wi-Fi. So that's pretty uh, simple. That's how it works. It works very well. So this cover pretty much, you know, uh, a first round on the open spot. So open spot two, sorry. Hope you enjoy. So this covers pretty much the web interface. Open spot connected to friend Meister 3021 link reflector 4322. This concludes this video. I hope you did enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you are already a subscriber, don't forget to click on the bell right beside the subscribe button to get notified when a new video is online. The Open Spot 2 is a very, very cool device. It is an upgraded device from the former uh, Open Spot 1. It is small, compact. It is full of feature it's good for beginners and advanced user you can use it in your mobile it boot very fast it's very stable i really like it they do update their software very very frequently when i received the device i was not able to connect to d star i click on the upgrade button and then the problem was solved you know they are just really really good at supporting their users they answer very quickly and uh thanks shark rf to bringing us this such a cool device to us that we've been asking for a mobile hotspot thumbs up on that thank you very much thanks for watching 73 and catch you some other time